Praise the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, well, uh, Pastor Joseph, the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah. The Lord Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah Hashofet, the Lord the Judge. Jehovah Rohi, my shepherd. Jehovah Ori, the Lord my light. Jehovah Mephalti, my redeemer. Jehovah Magen, the Lord my shield. He has spoken with me today. Uh, regarding the mission of the Lord that is coming up in Mombasa. I know that uh, at this point in time, for those who are in Kenya, all roads are now leading to Mombasa. And there is such a big movement, a big mobilization, a big shifting towards Mombasa in this land. And the Lord has taken his servant today to Mombasa. And when he took me to Mombasa, he raised a few things about that land. He took me all across the land. Number one, I see women prostitutes. Some of them, the Lord said, look, they're even young. They're young girls. And I could see the way they dressed and everything and their behavior. And the Lord took me around prostitutes across that entire coastal strip and island of Mombasa. So the Lord is presenting to me the state and the condition of his church. We are living in such an unfathomable time. We are living in these coveted days of his glory. Jehovah Hamelech, the king, is speaking to the church. At this hour, about preparedness, and entry, the entry of the church into the glorious kingdom, the eternal kingdom of Jehovah, the kingdom of God, the kingdom that we have waited for far and over and over and over again for many, many generations and years, thousands of years. The kingdom for which Christ the Messiah was released to come and die on the cross that one day we may be pardoned, justified, and then adopted into that kingdom. So, even at this hour, as the Lord speaks about entry into his glorious eternal kingdom of peace, a kingdom of worship, kingdom of righteousness. The Lord is at this moment talking about the condition of the church. And we saw most recently that the most recent conversation he had with me about the glory, the open heaven that is coming and how he's coming to visit his servant in the thick, very, very dark cloud. I've never seen so dark, so dark, very dark cloud. And then took me into heaven. I saw the storehouse of the rain. And now he opens, he splits up in a place where the, the water that flows horizontal now flows into that land and rains and so forth. But the conversation also before then was at the entrance to heaven. 20 to 30 meters to the gates of heaven. I saw the gates. I saw the door to heaven open. And then the Lord Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, 
the Lord, my provider, Jehovah Kabodi, the Lord, my glory, Jehovah Mashi, the Lord, my refuge. At that point, he showed me 20 to 30 meters, the church, the church that is prepared now entering heaven, finally entering. Finally, the church entering into the eternal kingdom of Jehovah Sori, the Lord my strength. I saw them. And so the conversation of the Lord with the church now is at the door of heaven. He's speaking about entry. And that's why now, in his engagement with the church in Mombasa, he is pointing out the condition of the church. The sinful condition of the church. In other words, he's saying, look, my sheep are without shepherd. That's why you see He's raising to me, he takes me across that land, and he shows me many, many young girls into prostitution because of the big tourism by the beaches of the Indian Ocean, the white sand beaches, the name it, the tourist resorts, those blue water beaches. And the abhorrible sexual immorality and sexual sin sexual perversion that goes on in that land where he is sending me one day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow, he sends me there, but he takes me ahead and shows me the land. I have seen the sin and the condition of the land. They are dressing, they are behavior. So many tourists from all over the world full in those beaches now. And you see these young girls into prostitution, immorality, and perversion. And the Lord is showing them to me and saying, look, this is the condition of my church. At a time when the announcement is right at the door to heaven. And I have seen the church that enters. She's a glorious church. A holy and glorious church. And in Mombasa, I would divulge more and more of what I saw in that conversation, in that visitation, when he showed me the vision of how the church enters now, finally entering. And I saw them, they're dressing, the particular detail of the dressing, the garment of heaven they were wearing, the garment of righteousness, the garment of the Redeemer that they were wearing as they entered, some with their children, family. But this is the time at which he is now highlighting the condition of sin in the church in Mombasa. Mombasa, Mombasa. Highlighting the condition of his sheep, his people. And then again, in another dream, the Lord takes me to Mombasa today, and he shows me a very little baby. I don't know how old this baby is. This baby must be very young. And he shows me pedophilia. He makes me know that this baby has been sexually defiled by an adult. A young baby. I don't know whether she's five or what age. I don't know what age. Five or seven or whichever the age. Really young. And then, he makes me know that this baby has been sexually defiled by some abuser. Some psychopath. I would call them psychopath. But where this baby takes refuge, in that family, there is a husband and a wife, I see. Then, I don't know how things turn around, and this husband, where the baby was taking refuge, again defiles this baby. 
It was very shocking to see. It was unbelievable to see this. And so the Lord is raising these serious issues on the condition of the church in Mombasa. Sexual sin, sexual perversion, this evil wickedness, the wicked spirit of sexual immorality has kidnapped the land. The land of Mombasa, the entire coastal strip of Kenya, the so-called tourist resorts. Very popular where you find all the tourists from Italy, from the entire Europe, from the United States, from Australia, everywhere. Every, the whole world is there. Middle East, everywhere. He's saying that is the condition of that land where he is sending me, including pedophilia, the defiling of minors, which is an illegality, it's criminal also. So the Lord is essentially saying that there is going to be need to call that land into repentance. Because his people have gone astray. They've gone astray, so they will need redirecting. So essentially, you can see the work that is cut out for me, the pronouncements that when I arrive there, the Lord will make in that land for the church, for the land, to return. To return. Return to the Lord your maker. Return to Jehovah. Shama, Jehovah, Sidkenu, you are God. Hashofet, the judge. Hamelek, the king. Hosea. The land of Mombasa must return to the Lord. A revival of repentance and the return to righteousness must be ignited in Mombasa because time is over. The announcement is at the door. I have seen the church end. I have seen the glorious church with their garment enter. I saw even the glorious steps when they are just about to enter into the cloud of heaven at the door. The steps appeared, and I saw as they stepped there, they, they, as they put their feet on those wonderful steps, they, they were glorious steps, they were glowing to me. They glowed towards my eye. It was a beautiful moment to behold. But how can the Lord be having the conversation on the entry of the righteous and holy church, the Holy Spirit enabled church, Holy Spirit filled church, while the rest of the earth? He is still in deep perversion, sexual sin, and a totally different story. The stories of this world, if you look at all the churches globally, they are focused on the goings on of the earth. They are running the errands about living more comfortably on this earth. While the Lord is saying, look, time is out. Time is over. Tell my people to prepare, to repent and turn away from sin. For now, the announcement of the Messiah is at the door. Tell them, you have seen the door to heaven open and the church enter. Tell them to be among their number. The number that enters eternity with God. The number that enters the safety and the security of heaven at a time when right ahead of us here, I have seen the unspeakable, the unbelievable destruction of the earth. And I've seen myself involved. The unbelievable destruction of this planet earth. You wouldn't believe it's the same earth. And he's saying, for his people that will prepare at this hour, Repent and return to Jesus in absolute righteousness. Be born again and live a holy Christian life. They shall enter into the safety of heaven because a few major events 
are about to consume the earth. Total destruction. Blessed is the land that the Lord speaks with. Speaks with. Blessed is the nation and the land. Blessed are the people that the Lord rebukes, whose sins the Lord highlights at this hour. And if you are out there, nations of the earth tuned in, and the Lord has not yet, you have not come before the Lord, that the Lord may highlight your sins and draw your attention, summon your attention, and rendition your mind and your spirit into repentance and the preparing of the way. Then surely, yes, you have to cry to the Lord that this visitation takes place in your land. There is no other time for it to take place. Jehovah HaShofet, the Lord, the judge. He is now preparing the church that enters eternity with him. The eternity of peace, the safety and security and the safeguard of heaven. The church that enters glory, that does not languish in the torment, the eternal torment of hell. That church is being determined right now. There is no other time at which the church that enters heaven is being determined. The Christians that will enter eternity with God, they are being determined right now as I speak. Those that choose righteousness and prepare unto the Lord, they enter now. It is being determined now. It will never be determined later. This is the moment at which the nations are hearkening unto this. I may be speaking to Mombasa, but these sins cut across the earth. The Lord is highlighting the sins of Mombasa, but essentially sexual sin has become global. And the church, instead of taking the mantle, taking the calling, taking the mission, the ordained mission, the holy mission that Jesus lavished us, lavished us with. He gave us that mission. And then go and prepare the nations for the glorious eternal kingdom that is coming. The church right now is engulfed in selling things, money, money, money. I give you a DVD, you give me this. If you buy three copies, you get this anointing. If you buy this oil, you get what? If you buy this what? If you, if you go to Israel, I'll take you to Israel. I'm a travel agent now. I'm taking people and taking off, cutting, cutting profit, profit from each person. Getting overhead from each. The more people I take to Israel, the more money I make. That's what the church is doing right now. They are merchandising the gospel. They are selling the blood of Jesus at market price. While the sheep of Christ are languishing in sin, there's no one, there's nobody to lead them to the holiness that earns them eternity. The holiness that guides them to this eternal kingdom, to this door that I saw. This is the condition of the church in Mombasa. But it is the condition of the church in North America. It is the condition of the church in Costa Rica and all the nations of Central America, Mexico, name it. It is also the condition of Southern America, Australia, New Zealand, the entire Africa, Europe, Asia, the islands, the oceans, the seas. That is the condition of man. And the Lord is saying there is a voice right now that is crying out to the nations, to the mountains, the oceans and rivers, to the springs, the roads, the dusty roads. The island, crying to the nations, the continent, to the trees and the herbs, telling them, prepare ye the way, return to righteousness, turn away from sin now, for the coming of the Messiah is at hand. And for the church in Kenya, this is a moment. This is your moment of revival. All the nations are now watching you. They are saying, look, the Lord is visiting them. Look, a 
tremendous visitation. Look, a beloved latter visitation is taking place. Look, the Lord is loving Kenya at this hour. So my prayer is that that will humble you. I am saying that the only thing that can stop you from entering heaven, the message has been announced here. The Lord has essentially discipled you pastors and bishops and everybody. Essentially discipled the land. Perpetually on the radio, the messages of righteousness, the message of holiness, the announcement of the coming kingdom, the announcement of prepare the way. Every moment, every hour, every minute, every day, every week, every month, every year has been on Jesus' is Lord radio. You have seen the visitation of the Godhead. The country with the largest number of creepers ever walk since the earth was created is Kenya. In thousands. Every other village is celebrating a cripple, total cripple that stood up and walked. Until now, still walking, it's constant. You look at a cripple walking that was totally crippled, and you essentially say, I have seen God today. They have seen countless numbers of blind sheep, lame, mute, paralytic, deaf, even to Mombasa. Right now, the, 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 the ministry, the senior archbishop is carrying more than 10 HIV cases that have been healed. Out of about 50 or so, he has picked 10. He says he has to take that testimony to that land and tell them, look the doing of the Lord. Look, this is the doing of Jehovah. Cripples have been, they simply have to select. They say, this time we've taken these cripples. We won't take this side. The deaf. So, what I am essentially saying is this. That for Kenya, the belovedness of the Lord is throbbing and percolating in the land. So, the only thing that can stop you from seeing eternity is called pride. P R I D E. Pride. And that's why I say it. I hope the tremendous visitations and the teachings of righteousness perpetually being trumpeted in the land, being noised to you on a daily basis, second after second, minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. I hope that that, coupled with the humongous visitations that you are urged, he said, I hope that that will essentially humble you. Humble you. The more visitation, the humbler. The more humble. Look, now there is a whole movement. The Spirit of the Lord is navigating his servant across the cities of this land to establish and consolidate the games. Today, today, today here, there is a new sign and wonder again that is going to be shared on this radio. When the Lord sent his servant to heal that water, the toxic water in Mombasa, and Someone recently got five liters of that water and took to another side of this city where the water was very toxic and very saline, saline and, 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 and salty. And that water got healed this past Monday. Monday yesterday. There is a program coming after me now on this radio to celebrate the sign and wonder of the miracle of Elisha the mighty prophet of Jehovah. So the Lord is saying, I hope that all these wonders and the signs and the miracles and the healing and the messages of righteousness will make you humble, humble as a people, humble as a church, humbler, humble as bishops, very humble. Pride. Only pride can now stop you from entry. Make no mistake, don't try. He would buy you from entry. 
I have seen the church enter. You have everything now. The instruction is in your lips. The instruction is in your heart. It's written on your four faces. It's on the wrist of your hands. You have the instruction of the coming of the Messiah. You've seen the wonders of God, the last anointing. You've seen the sign. So you are placed in a place where entry, entry to the kingdom of God is yours. If you humble, pride, the pastors, pride, keep it away from you. The bishops, pride, keep it away from you. If you keep away the pride, you consolidate the games, and then you enter the glorious kingdom of God. You become the number that I saw entering. You can even become a majority of that number. And for the other nations tuned in, the Lord loves you. The message has reached you tonight. You've heard the message. You hear the, tu the teachings. You tune in and you hear the teachings. The instruction on righteousness. The instruction on holiness. The instruction on repentance and developing the zero tolerance to sin that I have taught for more than 14 years straight. Zero tolerance to sin. How beautiful a gospel. I have seen the Messiah coming. This is he about whom the scriptures wrote. And this is he about whom even the prophet Malachi, the Lord spoke through him. This is he about whom the Lord said, I will send my messenger ahead of you before the day of the Lord. Shalom.